Hi, and welcome to Encouragement Ministries. Welcome to our service, to your service, our opportunity just to worship the Lord, to praise the Lord, and to magnify His holy name. Uh, friends, Kristen and I are so excited to be back with you, to be here with you today, and, and just to have this opportunity, just to share with with friends, to share with uh, loved ones yeah. from the Word of God and what it is that God has placed on our heart and what it is that uh, we know the Lord is saying to the people today what He's saying to the generation and the nations uh, on today. And so, friends, I'm so very, very glad to have Kristen here with me. You know, uh, we've been doing the past few weeks just, just you and me, just talking. Um, and so I'm so very glad to have Kristen it's good back, to be back on set. It's yes. good to be back. Feels good to be back. I've definitely missed you guys. I'm glad to be here. Good, good. <laughs> well, friends, we're going to go ahead and get ready for praise and worship. And I know you're excited about it because today, today's praise and worship, we're going to hear one of my all-time favorite songs Who that was written produced all that by none other than Kristen Chavis. And so, uh, friends, we're going to have some praise and worship by Kristen, and, and, and I'm so excited about it. But let's just, before we go into praise and worship, babe, would you lead us into a word of prayer? Father, we just thank you. We just praise you. We just love you. We just give you the glory, Lord. Lord God, we just open up our, our hearts. We open up our our hands, God. We stretch open our arms, Lord, to receive your word, to receive your glory, to receive your presence. Father God, whatever is not of you, Father, God, that is within us, that is on us, Father God, remove it out of the way, Father God, so that we may hear, so that we may receive, Father God. God, unplug our ears, open our, our, our eyes, open our hearts, so that we may receive you. Father God, speak life into our situation, Father God. Bring clarity. Father God, wherever there is darkness, bring light, Father God. God, wherever there is brokenness, fix it, Father. Yes. Father God, wherever there is anything crooked, Lord, make it straight. Anything rough, make it smooth. Yes. In, the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we can't wait to praise you. We can't wait to worship you. Father God, please receive our praise. Yes, Lord. Our worship before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, let us go right into praise and worship with Kristen Chavis. Give my life without 
Yeah.
Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, thank Lord. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And babe, you know, I thank you for that praise and worship. You know, that song, um, one thing about it is, as you were talking about, uh, with outstretched arms, open wide, Hallelujah. unto you I give my life. You know, even within that, um, that kind of goes back to where, where, what we've been dealing with and what we've been talking about uh, the past few weeks here. You know, um, we were talking about, you know, when you give your life to Christ, uh, when you make that stand for Christ, and once you say, Lord, I give myself to you, I give my life to you, you know, he comes in and, and he puts all that stuff out. But then, you know, it, it, as she was singing, you know, it began to talk about, I give my life unto you. And that's what we've been talking about is, you know, as you walk for Christ, as you stand on the word, as you stand in the word, as you stand for the word, that, that this is a continual process, that this is a daily thing. And so it, it's, it, you have to literally give your life to this. And the thing that I love about it is the more you give to him, the more he'll give back mm. to yes, you. And so, babe, right. thank you for that worship. I, I, I just bless God. Uh, for you and for that worship here today. God bless God. Yes, and 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 I mean it's a perfect way to set up uh, where we're going today, what we're going to be dealing with today. You know, um, the past few weeks we've been talking about standing, the power in your standing, and all those great things. But then you know the question then comes: Well, you know, what is it that I'm standing against? And then even more so than that. Once I have stood on the word of God, I've stood on the word of God, I've stood for the word of God, after I've done all of that standing, and sometimes it seems like it's just not going to work, what do I do next? And so friends, that's exactly what we're going to deal with today. That's how we're going to close out this series, uh, this session here today. And so we're going to go um to back to, we're going to go back to second uh Colossians I'm sorry we're going to go back to Colossians chapter 2 uh Colossians chapter 2 and I want us to start at verse number 14 now verse number 14 of Colossians chapter 2 now if you remember we read verse 10 the last time and and I'll read verse 10 uh, because I think that's kind of where we left off for the last time we left off with verse number 10 it says, and ye are complete in him, mm -hmm. which is the head of all principality and power. Then he comes down to verse number 14, says, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, against us, which was contrary to us, mm -hmm. and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, okay. and having spoiled principalities and powers he made a, a show of them openly triumphing over them in it now friends I want us to go over to uh, Ephesians we're going to go to Ephesians uh, chapter number 6 we're going to start at verse number 12 and um, when you get there you'll find these words it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13 then says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, mm -hmm. stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate 
of righteousness mm -hmm. and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the, take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, mm -hmm. and watching whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, I know, you know, we, like I said, what, I, what we want to look at and deal with is, first off, we see that Jesus, when he died on the cross, he conquered all principalities, all powers, all things, everything that would come against you. He conquered it when he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, if he conquered it when he died on the cross, then, you know, as we've been saying, all you have to do now is stand. And when you look at Ephesians uh, chapter number six, and you begin to uh, really dive into that, and you begin to look at what Ephesians six verse 12 is saying, I want to read it for you in the Amplified. Uh, when you go back to it, it says, For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. Mm -hmm. See, the reason why Jesus had to do it on the cross, the reason why he had to deal with it then is because this is not a physical My fight. God. You know, all these things that are attacking you, these, these, these thoughts in your mind, uh, these thoughts, you know, in, in your spirit and of your flesh and all that, that's not a physical fight. And see, you would have been all day, you know, uh, 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 trying to deal with this thing with flesh. And, and, you know, the way that they used to deal with it, uh, with flesh back in the day is every time that they would mess up or do whatever, you know, and it would get bad enough, they would have to go and search out uh, a pure lamb, or they'd go and find a dove, or they'd go and do this, and, and, and they'd have to spend their money and do this and do that. And the Lord saw that, look, if I keep, if, 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 if they keep having to do this, if they keep having, like, eventually, I may lose them. Because... Honestly, friends, think about it now. If you had to go and buy or find a dove mm -hmm. or a pure lamb that's white, see, you know, see. all that kind of yeah. stuff, or a calf that's that's clean, that's never mm -hmm. been, you know, I mean, would you go through all that trouble? Mm -hmm. Would you really, you know, spend money to, to go and, and, and get a, a sacrifice? And, and you would burn it, and then the thing about it is you wouldn't even, you know, we all, most of us love barbecue, mm -hmm. but this is something you don't even get to eat. Oh this is, the, I mean, you, you buy this, you take it to the priest, and you never see it again. And it was all for the sake of cleansing your sins, getting rid of mm -hmm. sin. And so Jesus said, you know, or God said, you know, I need someone to go for me. You know, you, you remember the story that Elijah told. He said, you know, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord and I was caught up into the heavens. And I, you know, heard a voice saying, who shall we send? Who shall go for us? And friends, you know, I want you to know that when that call went forward, here was Jesus. And he said, listen, Dad, send me. Send me. I know that the goats, the, the, the blood of goats and bulls and lambs and doves and all that is becoming a bit much. I'll bring the people back to you. And so that's what he's saying, because this fight was not physical. And the only way that you could deal with it was by covering your sins with blood. By, by sending up an, an, a sacrifice on the altar and saying, look. You know, the priest will go and say, look, Lord, this is on behalf of, you know, the Chavis family. They've messed up and they want forgiveness for their sins, this, that, and the other. But Jesus said, no, 
I'll bring them to you. So that they no longer have to go to priests and go to other people to get forgiveness and, and be cleansed from their sins. I'll go and bring them to you. So that's what he's saying here. And we're going we're gonna to keep reading here in verse number 12 because I really want you to see this. It says, but against despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Mm -hmm. Now, let's read verse 13 also in, 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 in this Amplified Version. It says, Therefore, put on God's complete armor mm -hmm. that you may be able to resist and stand your ground mm. on the day of evil, of danger, and having done all the crisis demands. I like that. I like that. I want to read that again. It says, and having done all the crisis demands mm -hmm. to stand Firmly in your faith. Wow. So, having done all that whatever crisis it is you're dealing with, whatever problem it is you're having, having done all that it that, that situation requires, it says stand in your faith. Stand. In your place. Mm -hmm. Friends, you know, I want to go back to, to, to verse 12 with that. And, and, you know, as it talks about, you know, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, all that. But then it says, um, but against despotisms and against the powers and against the master spirits who are. When it's talking about despotisms and all that, what it's talking about, again, are principalities. What it's talking about there are, you know, uh, all the, the, the demons and things that try and bind you, that try and come against you. And, you know, the thing that, that, that really, you know, gets me is it says the master spirits that are. Which means there are some spirits out there that are masters of their craft, mm -hmm. that are masters at, at, at deceiving people, at drawing people oh away. God, my God, my God. And so when you have done all there is for you to stand against those things, to come against those things, and it seems as though your standing is not enough. When it seems as though quoting scripture and all that is not enough because you've been fighting your desires. You've been fighting, you know, uh, these urges. You've been fighting the symptoms of the sin that you Jesus. used to be tied up Jesus. in. But now all of a sudden it's still there. Mm -hmm. Having done all to stand. He says, now stand firm in your faith and take on the complete full armor of God. And the thing that I love about that is, you know, it begins to break down the armor of God and we're going to break down that armor even more. But but I, I want you to uh, have a little bit to say here, babe. So why don't you go ahead and just deal with what we've already talked about a little bit. Well, when, when, when you bring up the armor of God and it talks about the different elements of the armor of God. The all all the parts of the armor of God are important. All of them represent a piece of God, who God is. Uh, God is salvation. God is righteousness. God is truth. God is peace. God is faith. God is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And God is prayer. 
and that's how we communicate and you know many times I've heard people say that it was six components to the whole armor of God but there's seven the most powerful force to fight with that we have as believers is prayer and you can't have on your whole armor and not know how to fight with prayer you can't have on your whole armor and not know what happened in Colossians not know that we're complete in him and not understand what he did when he went into the grave he went into hell and took the keys back from Satan that Adam had given his authority for us to die to and to not have eternal life for us to be bound in sickness he took those things back from the enemy and it says he triumphed over them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he he showed he did it openly he made a triumph over them openly and and he and and not in hebrews but in in ephesians um it says i'm sorry in colossians it talks about how he triumphed over them openly and mm -hmm. he made a show of them. Yes. He not only went and took the keys back, but he made sure all of everyone in the supernatural realm yes. could see mm -hmm. that he was king of kings and lord of lords. Yes. But guess what? That's not how it ends. Over in, in Ephesians, it talks about Ephesians, the, the 20th chapter, the first verse, the 20th verse, uh -huh. first chapter, 20th verse. Okay which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. And I want to go back to verse, I'm sorry, I skipped verse 19 and it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were who believe according to the working of his mighty power? I, you know, but I want to pause right there yeah, and I want yeah. to read this in the Amplified because it gets, it, it, you know, like I said last time, you know, uh, when you read it in the Amplified, it does exactly what it does, mm -hmm. or it says rather. It just amplifies that that so much more. It says, verse number 19, Ephesians mm -hmm. chapter 1, it says, And so that you can know mm -hmm. and understand what is the immeasurable okay. and unlimited mm -hmm. and surpassing greatness of his power. And, or, I'm sorry, power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Verse 20, which he exerted in Christ mm -hmm. when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above the rule and authority and power and dominion mm -hmm. and every name that is named above every title that can How be can conferred not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world that is to come. Did you read verse 22? Yes. Okay, and I'll read verse 22 as well. And he has put all things mm -hmm. under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, mm -hmm. a headship exercised throughout the church my god my god and see and see what's so key about this is it's not only telling you where jesus is in his ranking in the spirit realm but it's also saying that whatever he did you have 
Mm -hmm. Because it says in the King James Version that it was given to us word, meaning that we belong in that as well. Mm -hmm. So if he triumphed over principalities and powers and Satan himself, then that means that you are able to triumph over principalities, powers, and Satan himself. You can place them under your feet because he placed them under under his feet. But if we don't know our position in Christ, mm. if we don't know what he did for us that we're complete, there's nothing lacking. Yes. There there's nothing that that he missed. He didn't miss the mark. He left us everything that we need mm -hmm. to fight on this side and in the spirit realm. Yes. But if we don't pick up the weapons, if we don't understand the weapons, then we cannot fight. Yes. So when you go back to the whole armor of God and you understand that this is God covering me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, and he's not only covering me everywhere, but he has my back in prayer, my front in prayer. Everything is covered in prayer. And he said pray with all kinds of prayer. And, and that means that you can pray in your English and you can pray in your understanding. You can pray in the spirit. And one thing that I've come to learn that praying in the spirit not only edifies your body, not only edifies your spirit that Paul talks about, but it also is a powerful weapon against the enemy. It allows you to pull down strongholds. It allows you to pray what you don't know what to pray because we're spirit beings having a bodily encounter and Satan is a spirit. So only spirits can fight spirits. You can't fight with flesh and blood. Blood. So we can't fight Satan with our natural man, but we have to fight him with our spiritual man. Yes. So when you fight him with your spiritual man, that means you need to pray in the spirit. And the spirit knows what, what the spirit needs. Yes. Okay? The, he searches our heart. In Romans, in Romans chapter 8, it talks about the spirit searches our heart mm -hmm. and he intercedes on our behalf yes. before yes. the Father. So as we're praying in the spirit, we're connecting with the Father and the Father is directing our tongue to fight against every principality, every ruler of darkness, every, I don't care how small the demon is, I don't care how big the demon is. When you are wrestling with your flesh, Yes. That's when you need to kick in the spirit. When you're wrestling with the symptoms of the sin from your past, that's when you know you're under a spiritual attack and you need to fight and pray in the spirit. Yes. And many times people are afraid of praying in the spirit. They're afraid of tongues because they don't understand them. But how can you understand something if you never gave it a chance? How can you understand something that was given as a gift from God through the Spirit? It says that it's a gift. It's a spiritual gift. And when you pick up that gift, you're able to fight even more. You're able to stand in His complete power and know that you're above all principality. You're above every power. You're above whatever may be going on in your life yeah. but if you don't understand that his body which is the church is full and he's the one that feels it so if we're a part of the church if we're a part of the body of Christ we're lacking nothing mm -hmm. the enemy has covered our eyes and has us thinking that it's finished, that we're losing, that the world is getting worse and worse and the Christians are losing the fight, that God is dead, that he doesn't answer prayer, that he, he doesn't hear or care about what's going on down here. But in order, God listens to the prayers of the saints. Yes, God, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God knows everything that's going on. But God, hallelujah, is an on-time God. 
God yeah. moves in his own timing. God always has a plan. God uses the ones that are not in the forefront. And he takes the ones that are on, on the back of the mountain, watching their father's sheep, tending to, to a, a smaller ministry, tending to um, um, teaching and tending to whomever. You, you may have one or two spiritual children or whatever it may be. God takes those people and brings them to the forefront because they're used to fighting, my God, things that are stronger than them. And God is showing me David. David was able to rise up in the king, in the position of a king because he had already fought a lion and a bear. Yes. Okay, so let's break that down to natural terms, to us, our terms here. The lion is spiritual and the bear is spiritual for us the lion could be whatever that has you bound whatever you wrestle with at night whatever is somebody your neighbor doesn't know about that that has been eating at you and 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 and, and keeps you bound the lion could be a, a drug demon the lion could be depression the lion could be alcoholism the lion could be generational curses and that bear my guy is strong Yes. And both of them are strong. This is, this is a power. This is a ruler of darkness. Mm -hmm. This is spiritual wickedness uh, in high places. This is something that has been sent to attack you, sent to destroy you. But David, the young boy, overcame it. Yes. So in the word, God is showing you that although these things are stronger than you, because greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world, I'm able to kill the lion. Yes. I'm able to kill the bear. And this is my training on this side so that when I get to the place of kingship, when I get to this place where people hate me, as he talks about in Psalms, he's able to fight and to stand and do all that he can to stand with the whole armor of God because he has experience with the spiritual side, the spiritual warfare, the, the lion and the bear on this side. Yes. And that's what God is doing with you. God has allowed some things to come against you because he's trying to teach you how to stand. Mm -hmm. He's trying to teach you who you are in him. Yes. He's trying to teach you that sickness has no power or control over your body yes. unless you let it mm -hmm. because he nailed it to the cross all of our dispositions everything every sin every weight everything that could every tear every snare of the enemy has been nailed to the cross yes. but we have to realize who we are in christ yes, yes. amen amen and you know, friends, and and that's that's the whole thing. That even when you continue to look at uh, Ephesians six, you know, and twelve, uh, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, you know, what it talks about is, you know, realizing that greater is He mm -hmm. that is within you than He that's out against the world. And so what He's saying is, look, you know, you know, Kristen already kind of said each part of the armor is a representation of God and who he is. Mm -hmm. And so as you're taking that on, then you're taking on the spirit of God. Right. You're taking on the presence, the mm -hmm. anointing, the Our power God of God. You are. And so greater is he now who mm -hmm. is within me. Mm -hmm. Greater is he who is on yeah. me than he that is against yeah. me. And if God be for you, if God be in you, if God be on you, then friends, what could ever come against you? What could ever stand? And you know, I'll continue to read. Uh, I want to read this um, from the Amplified. This is again Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to pick up where we left off, verse number 14. It says, stand therefore, mm -hmm. hold your ground, mm -hmm. having tightened the belt of truth around your waist, or around, or around your loins, it says. Now, now, see, the thing about this is you, you, it says tighten that belt around your loins. Now, the thing about it is this. When the enemy comes against you, 
He's going to try and test you and get you to start lying. Mm -hmm. He's going to try and get you to start walking in, 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 in things that are not real, things that are not true. But friends, when the enemy attacks, mm -hmm. when the enemy attacks and comes against you, mm -hmm. You've got to you say, you know what, I'm going to tighten up on my truth. I'm going to tighten up the reins yeah. and, and begin to realize what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Because th what the enemy will try and do is he will try and deceive you. Okay. He is the great deceiver. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we have to tighten truth around our waist because it, in the waist is where all of the power stands. You know, if I tighten up my core, my waist, all that kind of stuff. You can try and knock me off balance, this, that, and the other. But if I have my core, mm -hmm. my waist yes. intact, yeah. you can't knock me over. Mm -hmm. So he says, at your core, remember the truth. Yeah. Hold on to the truth. Keep it close mm -hmm. to you. Remember, the truth is that you are more than a winner. You're more than victorious. Whatever that is, that is <laughs> what you are. You're more than victorious. You have to remember these truths. And so, so you know, uh, in the, the Constitution of the Preamble, one of them, it says, we find these truths to be self-evident. Mm -hmm. So then even if, we, as, if our Constitution says yeah. that, Hallelujah. then our Constitution as a believer, Hallelujah. as a Christian, yeah. should be, you know what, I find this truth to be evident mm -hmm. that God is real, yes. that he is a healer, and that I can make it yeah. against whatever it is that is coming against me. So that's why he says that you need to have the truth, uh, um, or belt of truth, tightened mm -hmm. around your loins. So then it goes on and it says this, after you've tightened the belt of truth around your loins, it says, and having put on the breastplate of integrity, mm -hmm. and of moral rectitude mm -hmm. and right standing with God. Having put on the breastplate of integrity. And then not only, but, 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 you know, it, it says moral in, uh, or integrity, but then it, it wants to break that down. That's why I love the Amplified. It says, and moral rectitude. Now, you know, th that just simply means, look, you know, you're you're there and you're able to stand in your morals. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, the integrity, you know, we, we did the uh, uh, integrity uh, thing before. And so, so the thing about it is this, now that you've stood in that truth, that, that uh, you know, God is a healer, that, that, you know, whatever the truth is in, in that crisis, as it said earlier, whatever that crisis demands that you stand on and stand in and you've done all against it. All right. So now you've declared the truth. Now you have to walk in the integrity of that truth. So now, now that you have that belt of truth around mm -hmm. your waist, you have to stand according to that. Say, you know what? I believe that God is a deliverer. Mm -hmm. I believe that he's able to do it. And you have to stand yeah. according to that. You see, you see, now it's starting to form a picture of how all of this stuff works together. Because, you see, when you look at Jesus and the character of God, God told Moses, I am mm -hmm. that I am. And so when Moses went and he encountered different situations, I am whatever he needed mm -hmm. showed up when the, the, the sorcerer was there and he threw his staff down and it became a snake. Moses said, okay, Lord, I, you know, you said you are mm -hmm. right now. I need my staff to become a snake mm -hmm. and to, to, to overpower this. Yeah. When, when, you know, uh, uh, all of this stuff begins to happen, the great I am stood in. He stepped in. And so you now have to put on that character of God and say, you know what? This is the truth about this situation. It's rough right now, but I'm going to make it. I'm more than a winner through Christ Jesus. 
now let me start to walk like a winner. Mm -hmm. Let me start to act like a winner. Let me start to, to think like a winner. Don't let me look at this situation every day all the time and think that, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Right. I don't know if the, no, no, no. Friends, you know, it's just like this. The other day, uh, a few weeks ago, my wife and I planted uh, uh, some, some little pods, some little sago palm pods. Uh, you know, they start off as a big bulb or whatever in, in the ground. And, and one of those pods that we've planted in the ground, I looked at the bottom of it and it's a little orange on the stem. And, you know, fear began to creep in and say, uh oh, this one might not live. But I've said real quickly in my mind, something shifted and said, no, I, I, this thing will live. Yeah. It will grow. Yeah. It will flourish. Yeah. And it it's hasn't right. died yet. It's and so right. I am declaring the truth. Mm -hmm. The truth of it is, is that everything it needs to live is already there. And so I believe that because everything that it needs to live is present within it, now I'm going to stand in it. And every time I look at it, I'm going going to reject that 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 thought of fear and doubt and I'm going to stand in the integrity of what I said. You know baby, right there God is showing me something. The whole armor of God. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. And the word is like a two-edged sword dividing asunder the the soul and the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the soul and the spirit are so closely knit together that that the word is sharp enough to divide the two. Because many times people think they're hearing something from the spirit and they're really hearing it from their soul or their flesh. Mm -hmm. But God is showing me that the word cuts. The word is what fights. And he said, you fight with your words. Mm -hmm. You fight with the word of God. Yes. But you also fight with the words from your mouth. Mm -hmm. Because there's power in your word. So as he was speaking and saying, I, I declare over this thing that it's going to live. I declare that it's not going to die. You stand by speaking to the situation. Yes. When you speak to the situation, God showed me the sword cutting down every cord, everything that is wicked, every principality, every power, every ruler. You are cutting it down. Mm -hmm. The devices of the enemy, you are cutting them down with your words. So therefore, you cannot afford to be a closed mouth Christian. Yeah. You cannot afford to be a bashful Christian. You cannot be a, afford to be backed up in a corner where the doctor is telling you that this is going to happen, but in your spirit you're not receiving it and God wants you to speak out and say no I believe God yes. I believe that he was wounded for my transgressions I believe that he was bruised for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with every one of his stripes I am healed yes. you have to declare it over your life over and over and over when I was sick in my body and the symptoms were showing me one thing but God was telling me to stand on me in faith I had to declare over my life until my faith met up with what the spirit was doing yes. I had to speak over my life until I saw the results of God's mighty hand in my life working. You know, many times people believe God for their healing and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you should do. But if you're not working your faith, if you're not covering yourself with the whole armor of God, if you're not speaking the word to fight in this fight, if you're not telling every spirit that is not of God to leave, then essentially you're basically with your hands tied. Yeah. You're basically going into a boxing ring with no gloves and bound and the enemy is beating you up. Yes. And God did not call you to be a beat up believer. God did not call you to fail, but God called you to fight. Yes. God called you to keep the ground, which he's talking about in Ephesians 6, keep the ground that he gave us. Yes. He did all the work on Calvary. Yes. He did all the work in the grave. He did all the work when he rose with all power. But we have to take back what was given and to hold it 
And if you feel it slipping, you got to make sure you bring it back. Okay? Because God has designed this thing where we don't lose, yes. but we're more than a winner. Yes. We're more than a conqueror. Yes. Because he already conquered. Yes. And if Jesus already conquered with all power, then you're more than a conqueror because it was a fixed fight. It yes. is a fixed fight. Absolutely, yes. He's already won it, yes. but we have to realize that my daddy has left me an inheritance. Yes. How many of us, if you knew your daddy left you $200 million, would not get the money, but try your best to keep the money. Mm -hmm. How many of us would frivolously throw it away? Yeah. Throw it in the ditch, throw it in the trash, just do whatever we want to do with it, or not even go claim it. Right. How many of us would not claim $200 million that was left to you? Hmm. Because... We, we we don't want it or because no one ever showed it to us for ourselves or it, we heard it was a rumor or or we go to church and we hear that his name has all power but we never really act on it we never really put it to the test yeah my god hallelujah, hallelujah. fight with the sword of the spirit fight with your words and see the power that God has given you. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you know, friends, as we continue on, you know, we were just talking about uh, um, the, the the shield of uh, faith. faith and all that. And then you know, then it comes on in verse number fifteen, and it says this, and it says, "And having shod your feet mm -hmm. in preparation yeah. to face the enemy with." The firm-footed stability, the promptness mm -hmm. and readiness produced by the good news, the gospel of peace. Yeah. Now, what it's talking about here is, again, you know, we talked about it a few weeks ago when it says in... Uh, I want to say 2 Thessalonians or one of those, it talks about studying to show thyself approved mm -hmm. unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. You know, it it's, it's again goes back to the same scripture, the same uh, uh, thing again. You know, no man who is set out to build a house does not first calculate the cost mm -hmm. to see if he will be able to run. Uh, or, or be able to complete it. And, and similarly, it's again, when you're getting ready to go fight, what he's saying here is you have to have yourself ready with the gospel of peace. Meaning when stuff comes against you to trouble your mind, when str stuff comes at you that's going to stress you out, you say, no, no, I'm already ready for this. I'm already prepared because I've prayed this morning. I've read my Bible this mm -hmm. morning. I've got everything that I already need. My feet are shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace mm -hmm. or the, the preparation of the gospel of peace. So, so I, I, no, 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 you're not going to stress me out. Yeah. You know, people used to say, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I, because I've prayed, because I've read the word, it has now blessed me. Now I'm so blessed. I refuse to let any situation, any problem, anything stress me. Mm -hmm. You know, and people, people always, you know, well, people close to me in my family, all that say I have this almost nonchalant. They say I have a nonchalant type of personality when stuff happens. But it's simply because I understand that I am prepared with the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. I understand it doesn't look good right now, but I understand what the truth is. I'm walking in the integrity of who God is mm -hmm. and of what that truth is. And so now I have peace. I understand that bothers you. It stresses you, but I'm at peace or with it. I'm at peace, yeah. peace, even in that situation. So friends, what it's saying here is, look, now you have the, the your truth. You know what the truth is. You got the truth close to you. 
And then after that, you begin to walk in the integrity of that truth. Now, now that you have all those things lined up, it's saying don't stress. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Be at peace. peace. Yeah. How do you walk in that peace? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's saying, it's because simply what it's saying, you know, feet shot with the uh, gospel of peace is it's saying as I'm walking, the reason why the peace is at your feet is because you're going to walk. And as soon as you start walking, trouble is going to come your way. You know, the, the thing I like about it, the Lord just showed me the illustration of a baby. You know, when you look at babies, uh, they can crawl all day long. And, and when they crawl, they don't seem to get, you know... It, it, like it hurt much mm -hmm. because I mean crawling you feeling your way around okay oh wait nope that you know but then when they start walking oh it, it gets a little wobbly they may you know take a step or two and then tumble back into mm -hmm. something but when they're on all fours it's more stable mm -hmm. they can they can handle that but then as soon as you start walking stuff is gonna come that may knock you over knock you down mm -hmm. But then you, you don't cry about it like the baby does because now you're prepared because you know what? I've got my truth. I'm walking in the integrity. I'm walking with my shield of faith, you know? And so now, you know, my feet are covered and I'm ready. Whatever comes, I'm going to walk up to it with mm -hmm. peace. I'm going to walk on through it with peace. I'm going to walk on past it with peace peace yeah. and then you continue reading and we're going to keep on moving then it says in verse number 16 lift up over all the covering the shield of saving faith mm -hmm. upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles mm -hmm. of the wicked one friends what he's saying here is look, the devil is going to shoot some stuff your way. He's going to come at you with some stuff. He's going to send all kinds of things at you because as a Christian, there is a target on your back mm -hmm. that says, try me. That says, put my God to the test. That's the target that you literally put on your back when you say, God, I trust you. And so he's saying, well, then if you're going to trust me, then hold up that shield of faith. You know, I, I've, I've talked about it before. You know, I love, love, love the movie 300. And one of my favorite lines in that movie, it's, it's when all the guys are fighting and they're talking about, you know, oh, well, Xerxes has an army. And when they shoot their arrows, it blots out the sun. And then one of the guys turns to him and he says, well, then I guess we shall fight in the shade, <laughs> you know, and it, it just gets me. And then later on when they're fighting, you know, all these arrows literally come and it gets like dark for a second because Xerxes army has shot all these arrows out. And then, you know, uh, um, uh, King Leonidas yells out, uh, take cover or tuck tail or whatever he says. And they all get in their little hut and they put up their shield and they hold their shield up. Each man covers the next one next to him. Mm -hmm. And then after it's all said and done, all of the arrows are there in their sword, in their shield rather. Mm -hmm. And he just breaks them off and says, now we're going to fight. And so friends, that's what your faith does for you. You're standing in that truth. You're standing in the t integrity. Stress has now started to come against you. And you said, no, I'm going to walk in peace, walk with peace. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to do none of that stuff. Now your faith has to kick in because now the devil's really pissed off. <laughs> and so you've got to, I mean, you, you've slaughtered some of his enemies. And that's what was happening in the movie 300. Leonidas and his 300 had slaughtered some of Xerxes' people already. So he said, look, we, we just going to send out, you know, we're going to get them with these arrows. And friends, when the enemy tries to attack from above, mm. you've got to look to the hills. Hallelujah from which cometh your help. All your help comes from the Lord. That's who your faith is in. Your faith is in God and in what Jesus did on the cross. And you begin to believe that. So you hold up your shield of faith and say, not today. Nope. 
And then you can even do like the men on 300. And when the devil is attacking with all these arrows, begin to laugh. Hallelujah. Because you have your peace. Begin to laugh because you've got your faith. And you know that with your shield of faith, you're able to quench every one of his Hallelujah. darts. Every one of his missiles. Every one of his arrows. Friends, you've got to have your shield of faith. And then verse number uh, 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Uh, and it says here, and the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. That's what it says in the Amplified. Uh, the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit mm -hmm. wields, which is the word of God. And Kristen has already dealt with the sword and she's told you about what that sword is and what it does. You know, the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword, That's right. you know, and it pierces and it cuts and it divides. And then that helmet of salvation, you know, I've often wondered why there is this salvation within the helmet? Because friends, you've got to know that you're saved. And you say, well, James, what good does that do? Because, see, after the enemy has tried to get you and, and to, to knock you out off of that truth and to, to come at you to believe the lies and you've said, nope, I'm not going to believe the lies. Mm -hmm. After you've stood on the integrity of God's word and the things that you've said that you believe when you said that this is going to be my truth. After you've decided that you're not going to stress, you're too blessed to be stressed. Mm -hmm. After you've gotten your shield of faith, the next thing is the devil's going to come at you and you're going to still be dealing with whatever issue it is. That same issue, just like the 300, you're still going to be fighting those same enemies. And it's going to come at you in a different form. And now it's going to say, you're not really saved. Mm. You're not really saved like you think you are. You're not saved like they say you are. Look at you. You're doing all of this and you're not even really a Christian. Can can you remember the time when you, you know, did this, mm -hmm. did that? I remember when you used mm -hmm. to. I remember when you used to go clubbing, used mm -hmm. to go drinking. You used to. You know, the enemy will try and then come at you and get you to think that you're not saved. But friends, you've got to know mm -hmm. That you know, that you know, hey, I'm saved, buddy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jesus did it. He paid it all. I'm saved. I'm going to stay saved. Come at me with whatever. However, I'm going to stay saved. So, friends, you know, that's, that's why it has that. And then, like I said, Kristen has already covered uh, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And, and I love the way it says it here. It says the, the, the sword that the spirit wields. That means the spirit is, is, has, has given you this sword, mm -hmm. has made this sword. Yeah. This, this sword is a spiritual thing. And it, it, it can handle spiritual fights. Yeah. It can handle spiritual things. And finally, friends, we're going to read verse number 18. And it says it this way. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, okay. in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all saints, which is God's consecrated people. Mm. Friends, what it's saying there, what it's simply saying there is, look, you've got to pray Hallelujah. in season, pray out of season, pray, you know, when things are good, when they're good, when they're bad. See, and that's, that's the thing is so many of us, we want to build up our prayers when times are rough, when things are hard. But what about when it gets rough? What about when it gets bad? Friends, you have to pray at all times.
times. At all times. You need to be praying at all hours of the day. For it, I mean, you know, because without prayer, you just not, I mean, you know, Kristen, I already covered it, and, and, and I'm just, again, recapping about prayer. But if you don't have some sort of prayer life, prayer is how we communicate with God. Reading the Word, that's how He talks, to, that's one of the ways, rather, that He talks to us. But how is it that, you know, if we don't talk to Him, and, and I'm not saying you have to verbally pray, and I understand that God sees all things. He knows all things. But friends, if, you know, I can know something is wrong with my wife. I can see that something is wrong with my wife. And, and I can ask her, but if she keeps saying, no, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. But I see it. I sense it. I feel it. I know it. That something's wrong with her. But yet she's still saying, I'm fine. There's nothing I can do to help her. So friends, we have to get to a place where we open up with God. Be real with God. Be sincere with God. Talk with him and say, look, God, this is what's going on. I know that you already know, but I just need to share. This is where I'm at. This is what I'm dealing with. This is the problem that I seem to be having. So friends, I want to encourage you to pray. Pray all hours of the day. Pray morning, noon, night. You don't have to pray long prayers either. They don't have to be fancy prayers. But they can just be a simple, Lord, I love you. I need your help. I mean, you know, God, you see this situation. Help me. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. That, that can be your prayer. And then sometimes, friends, you just got to get, you know, uh, in a real deep prayer. Mm -hmm. And you got to pray in the spirit, as it says. And when it's talking about praying in the spirit, like Kristen said, that's praying in tongues, praying, you know, and, and because what the thing about it is, is the spirit, you know, the Bible says is that, you know, we don't know what to pray for, but the spirit knows what to pray for. And so if you've never prayed in tongues, then sometimes, you know, uh, it, it can start off so simple as, as just, you know, just humming, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, um, one, one, one prayer you know, language that, that I first started out with was just, hey, 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 ha, ha, hey, 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 you know, I didn't know how to do all that fancy, t fast tongue moving that everybody <laughs> else knew how to do. So I just say, hey, hey, ha, ha, hey, 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 ha, you know, and, 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 and then all of a sudden it transformed, it grew, but I knew that I needed some deeper prayer and so I didn't know what to say in that moment and I was like Lord I need to pray mm -hmm. in some deep prayer so hey hey ha ha hey hey and as I began to do that it sounds crazy but then the Lord began to move mm -hmm. the Lord began to, to to do some things and so friends if you even if you don't know how to pray in tongues it, it, it doesn't take all the fancy fast tongue movement that's not for everybody that's not how everybody does it. Mm -hmm. But there are some tongues where it's just, mm, 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 mm. And it starts off like that. And you start to feel something welling up within you, mm -hmm. some power coming up in you. That's the power of your prayer. That's the power of your tongues. So I don't want you to be confused or bound or held back because you think it takes all that fancy stuff. No, no, no. It doesn't take all of that. No, no, no. You can just simply hey, ha, ha, hey, hey, or hmm, 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 hmm. Whatever, whatever you've got to do the spirit will lead you. to pray in the spirit, the Lord will lead you on how to do it got to do it yeah and then the th the beautiful thing about it and, and and we'll do some more teaching on this uh the next time but it talks about you know the interpretation you you want to know what it is you're saying in those moments we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that some more next time but i want you to know that god will even give you interpretation to that because what you'll begin to find is you'll begin to pray like that you'll begin to be doing that and then it'll start coming out in english or maybe you'll be doing it and then you're starting to understand what that means. In your mind, you're like, oh, wow. Because what you're essentially doing is praying what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're praying what you're thinking. And, and like I said, we'll deal with that some more. But I wanted to at least okay. let you know that when you start doing that, 
that's what that's all about. Yeah. You know, you, you'll, you'll start praying what you're thinking and your, your hmm, hmm will start lining up with what you're mm -hmm. thinking. The intensity of them will even line up yeah. with how intensely you're thinking yeah, about it. it Friends, I want you to know that you have to have the whole armor of God to be able to stand. Yes, you know, sometimes your faith is going to be tested. But when you put on that whole armor, the complete armor of God, I want you to know you will be able to stand. You'll be able to make it. You'll be able to fight off all attacks of the enemy. So, friends, this is the word of God for you, concerning you this day. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that you have received something out of it. And, and, you know, this closes out that series that we've been dealing with about standing on the word of God, standing on the word of God, standing for the word of God. And right now, even in this moment, you may find yourself in a place where you say, you know what, James, I have learned so much and I realize that I need to take a stand. I realize that I, I need to take on this whole armor of God. I've never taken the stand for God, with God, in God. I've never put on the whole armor of God because I didn't know God. And right now, if you want to make that commitment, Hallelujah. all you have to do is send up your heart's cry unto the Lord. Whatever your heart's cry may be, just begin to send that up to the Father. I begin to say to the Father, Lord, you know what? I, I need you. I want you. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just simply tell Hallelujah. him how much you need him, how much you want him, how, what you desire from him. Whatever the case may be, won't you send your heart's cry out unto the Lord? Yes, Lord. And maybe you say, well, James, you know, I've received Christ as my Lord and Savior, but you know, uh, I've come to understand and realize that my walk with him is not as strong as it could be. Mm -hmm. That I have not been standing as firm as I could be. Mm -hmm. So now here today, I want to stand firm. Yes. I want the Lord to help me to stand firm. Send that cry up to the Lord as well. Send your heart's cry, whatever it is, up to the Lord. Send your heart's cry to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he will hear you. He will hear you. Thank you Jesus. He will hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He'll hear you. Won't you send your heart's cry up to him? Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Yes, God. Are you led to pray in this moment? Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you. for shining your light. Yes. We thank you for understanding. We thank yes, you for God. even deliverance in this moment. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you have shown us what your word means. You have shown us who we are in you, Father. Mm -hmm. And God, I thank you for every believer. I thank you for every person of faith Yes, Lord. that shall cover themselves with the whole armor of God. Cover yes. themselves with you, Father. Yes, From Lord. this day forward, God, I thank you, God, that they shall stand Yes, Lord. when all they can do is stand. Yes. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for, for making things clear. I thank you, Jesus, for the hearts and the souls that are being ministered to. I thank you, yes, Lord. Lord. Thank Hallelujah, you. that they are being filled, Father God, because you said if we thirst and hunger for righteousness. Yes. We shall be filled. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you, God, for new viewers. I thank you, God, for even new followers. I thank you, God, for for uh, uh, old viewers, God. I thank you, God, for old followers, God. Yes, Lord. Faithful yes, viewers, Lord. faithful yes, followers. Father God, I thank you for each and every one of them, God. And I ask that you bless them all, Father God. Yes, Lord. A hundredfold, Lord. And God, I pray that as your word is being sown in their heart, that it produces. Yes. Father God, I thank you, God, that this will not just be another sermon to listen to. This will not be another word to listen to just to say that we listened to something, God. But it shall be something productive in our spirit. It yes, shall be God. something that we apply to our very lives. Yes, Lord. Because we're in a fight. Yes. 
we're in a war every day, Lord, yes. and we must be prepared and ready to fight back. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, name I of decree Jesus. all of these things that your people shall be prepared. They are equipped. Yes, God. And they shall learn and they shall be ready and shall use the information that you have sent from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, friends, we thank God for you. Yes. And we pray again that this has been a blessing to your life. Friends, we love you. We thank God yes, for you. We we'll see you again Amen. next time. You be blessed. In Jesus' name.